Hey folks, Dave here, and welcome to a special episode of Backyard Battlefield, which is actually going to take place in my backyard, kind of, for once. This is my firearm series, and while I've been stuck on quarantine lockdown, it's been tough to keep up practice with both my rifles and pistols because most of the ranges in my state have been shut down due to the quarantine. So I decided to actually build a berm, a shooting berm, in my backyard at the back of my property to practice with my 22s. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I built my backstop berm to catch those 22 bullets. And we're also gonna look at two of my main practice guns. This is a modified Titman Arms 22. That's right, the same company that makes your paintball gun was originally a firearms manufacturer and they're now getting back into it with some really, really high quality 22s. So we're gonna be looking at this 22 caliber practice AR, which is now suppressed with a Liberty Constitution suppressor under the rail there. And we're also going to be looking at and shooting this six hour 22 caliber 1911, which is not really a 1911. It's also not really a SIG. It's a, uh, what is it, uh, GSG out of Germany, just branded SIG, which I believe that relationship ended just a couple of years ago. This is an older pistol but it's not a real 1911, it's just direct blowback action. And I've also built a new Form 1 suppressor just for this pistol, basically. It just lives here on it as my back of the property practice pistol. And it holds up pretty well. Pretty awful trigger, but uh, good for practicing trigger pulls. I'm also gonna be trying out some targets from New Bold Targets. They sent over some of their polymer self-healing flipper paddle targets for me to try out here with my backyard range. A big thank you to them for sending those over, especially during the middle of a pandemic. If you guys like those targets, they actually set up a code as well, Ranger Day 15, to get 15% off if you guys want to try those targets. No kickbacks for me, just a discount code for you guys. I wanted to get all of my practice guns here set up with suppressors so that, you know, if we've got Mike out in the backyard enjoying the day, I'm not gonna disturb him with uh, gunfire even with just the 22s as I'm practicing and 22s are kind of an oddball when it comes to suppressors because I did that video last year explaining to you guys that most suppressors don't silence anything at all they're actually quite loud well certain 22s can be the exception to that with the right ammo 22 suppressors are basically the only kind that can get close to what I would describe as Hollywood quiet or video game quiet. So today we're going to be shooting some uh, CCI subsonic 22 as well as some Agula super extra standard velocity which is just barely subsonic as well. But with the short barrel on this 22 AR it does remain subsonic. One thing to keep in mind though is even if the muzzle blast of these 22s with these suppressors is technically hearing safe, and in some cases very hearing safe, these are still semi-autos. So as the shooter, you're going to have some very loud action noise coming out of, for the AR here, the ejection port. When you're shooting, your ear is gonna be right there. So for the most part, I am still going to wear hearing protection when I'm firing these, just because that action noise can still be dangerous to your hearing. You only get two ears, guys. Protect them. Before we go out and do some shooting and take a look at the berm, let's take a close look at our two firearms here. For this Titman Arms 22 caliber AR practice rifle, again, it does have 25 round magazines and what I would consider probably the nicest 22 caliber uh, AR mags on the market. Titman designed these just for their gun. They have this dust cover, you can hit the button and slide open to access uh, the spring. So you still have the ease of loading like other brands 22s, but you have a nice dust cover to work with when you're actually shooting. The Titman is all aluminum. It uses a aluminum upper receiver and an aluminum lower receiver and all metal uh, lower parts kit parts. 
this thing feels like a real AR. And they've even made a custom pistol brace here on the back that's unique to their rifle. Excuse me, pistol, because this is actually a pistol with that pistol brace. It only has a seven inch barrel. So that short barrel will help to keep the ammunition, especially the Agula subsonic, as it goes through that Liberty Constitution suppressor, which tucks so cleanly under this rail. Now this is not the rail that came with this gun. It came with, as you would expect for a seven inch barrel, a roughly seven inch rail. It had a very odd barrel nut, so I'll show you guys a couple of B-roll clips here as I was taking it off in case you buy this same gun and wanna try it for yourself. Just a, a very strange barrel nut that I had never seen anything like it before. But I was able to get it off with the help of a heat gun and a good old fashioned wrench. And this hardened arms uh, rail system here fit on perfectly. And it just works so well with this suppressor. I mean, that is such a clean look. I'll probably put a hand stop under here at some point just so that new shooters who are trying this for the first time don't accidentally you know, put their hand in front of the muzzle. But for me, uh, this is basically my ideal 22 practice gun. It just feels like the real thing, except for the recoil, obviously. The brace is adjustable. I think it's uh, three position. One, two, yeah, roughly three position. It does have some sling attachments, no sling on this just yet though. And it does come with Tipman branded uh, polymer flip up sights, which are a little stiff. There we go. They look a lot like Magpuls, but uh, I can't really speak to the long-term quality, but hey, it's a 22, right? You shouldn't be beating this thing to death with recoil at least for our 22 pistol. Again, nothing crazy here, just direct blowback. Kind of has a pot metal slide. It's got no weight to it. It's some kind of zinc alloy, I think. It has very, very high sights, which you don't actually need for the suppressor because it's only a uh, one inch diameter suppressor. And again, being a direct blowback rimfire pistol, trigger's not great. Nothing even close to a real 1911 single action trigger, but as far as backyard plinking goes, um, a lot of my pistols are single action hammer fired with a thumb safety, so this is a great direct blowback stand in. Take the can off here for a second. Again, that's a Form 1 uh, custom build. You apply to the ATF, you get your tax stamp, and you can build your own suppressor. Had it Cerakoted and engraved at NC engravers as usual. And then all steel cones inside, so uh, 10 of them in total, so 10 baffles, just standard 60 degree baffles to help cut that gas down. And it sounds really, really good. Now when it comes to the berm, this is how I decided to set things up. At the back of my property, we have an old gardening cottage and a pretty good sized garden, and also an old fire pit that wasn't really getting used anymore. We've moved where we have our bonfires, so I took a lot of that dirt and ash and decided to build a berm just nicely arranged there in front of the garden fence. Hopefully, we're gonna see some grass start to actually grow on it uh, as the months go by, and it'll blend in a bit better with the rest of the back of the property there. And seeing we had plenty of time to wait around while under quarantine, I did a couple of layers for the berm. I would do a couple of scoops with the tractor, let the dirt sit, get rained on for a while and settle just to help with reinforcing it and keeping it from eroding away too quickly. I got a hold of some scrap lumber, just did some basic cuts with the skill saw and knocked some basic supports around it. Again, just to help with that erosion because as you shoot it, the impacts are gonna cause the dirt to start to collapse in on itself. So hopefully that scrap wood will do the trick and it won't just completely collapse, especially if I really start putting some rounds into it, getting that practice in with the 22s. Let's check out these new bold targets. Again, discount code in the description. No kickback to me if you guys wanna try them. And we're gonna have some Agula ammo here. I haven't cleaned this since I got it. Probably 300 plus suppressed rounds so far. I hit that middle one too close to the bottom. <laughs> I 
the spinner can't spin. I put it too close to the uh, berm. I gotta go through and put a string on these so we can reset them from back here. So again, we've got the Sig Sauer slash GSG 1911 and 22. Mag almost escaped there. 10 round magazines and this one is pretty dirty as well. I run these 22s pretty hard because they take forever to clean. Didn't quite go into battery. Failure to feed. Stove pipe. We might have to oil these up, guys. Especially as these guns get dirtier and dirtier with the suppressors and this always dirty 22 ammo, the CCI ammo is not going to cycle, especially the pistol, as reliably. So I'm going to swap over to the higher FPS Agula, which should cycle pretty well. Oh, uh, yeah. That's much more reliable. <laughs> Failure to feed. Reliable, to a point. Failure to ignite, so I'm gonna put that one back in the chamber. There we go. There's one fun thing you can do with these polymer new bold targets, because they're not steel, they don't reflect anything back to you, the rounds go into the berm. You can get really, really close and practice your point shooting. So let's see, we got a round in the chamber. Yes, we do. All right, safety on. No kickback for the lead. That's pretty cool. Let's try this, reload drill. One round in this mag. Extra mag is kind of buried in my pocket here. Let's get it out. Middle target, mag chains, rest of the targets. That's just good fun right there. <laughs> it's getting kind of dark, so let's try out some orange tracers. Pretty low success rate on this. Let's do some tracers from the pistol. It's getting real gritty. Time for a cleaning. Even without the suppressors, 22s are incredibly dirty and the ammo is notoriously unreliable. Oh, those tracers are just fun right there. Ah, oh, just missed the spinner there. It goes right below it. There we go. And we're empty. I guess if nothing else, a dirty 22 is good for practicing malfunction drills, which are important. But I want to see if these tracers can set some of our survival toilet paper on fire here. I don't think so. Let's try it out. Ooh, that one sizzled on the target. That was a wasted shot. Let me move our new bold targets out of the way. 
that one got stuck in the polymer. Burn, baby, burn. Oh, I see smoke. <laughs> oh, could it be? This actually might work. <laughs> Guys, we almost set it on fire. I'm also gonna put up our Heinz beans here, Day Z style. These expired in 2013, probably shouldn't crack them open. Here we go. Okay, that was cool. Oh, that was a good smoky one too. <laughs> no go, just some smoking. Bean explosion. Well, there you guys have it. New backyard range for the 22s. And the Titman ran great, even as dirty as it was. Who would have thought to clean a gun before you do a video with it, right? But hey, malfunction drills are important. Man, the amount of unburnt powder and crud all over the chamber, definitely time for a clean. But yeah, if you guys are looking for a quality 22, I mean, the Titman, it's just hard to beat. And with that Liberty suppressors constitution inside of that rail. This is just a, a really fantastic package here for practice. And of course, a thank you to New Bold Targets once again for sending out their paddle targets here. These are fantastic. Check them out right there in the description if you guys are interested. These are definitely gonna be staying right here for practicing with, but for now, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time on the next episode of The Backyard Battlefield. Turns out toilet paper is actually really hard to burn.